Hey everyone, it's January 26. It's been a while since we've done a fishing report here for Lake of the Ozarks, so uh, let's get into it. The fish have been biting. You know, we fished a tournament uh, the weekend after New Year's and the fish were really, really biting. We fished the uh, uh, Bass and Bob Winter Series out of Valhalla. Uh, actually, me and my uh, partner Corey had a good tournament, finished second in that one with with 18 pounds, but there was a lot of other 18 pound stringers and nice stringers weighed in. And since then, the fishing's got a little bit tougher uh, in general. Um, you know, of course, in that tournament, uh, you can you can uh, only throw uh, jerk baits. The winning team had like 20, almost 22 pounds, so uh, they really crushed them. Uh, but um, you know, a lot of nice fish being caught on jerk baits. A lot of nice fish being caught on jigs and still some fish being caught on crankbaits. Uh, the water temperature is, um, you know, 38 in some places, you know, way up the creeks and rivers. And, uh, you know, it, it's still in the, the low 40s uh, throughout a lot of the lake. So the fish are still pretty active. Uh, the crappies have been biting like crazy and uh, we still haven't really seen that winter draw down like uh, we normally experience. So, um, you know, there's been a few tournaments on the lake. Uh, tournament results have been up and down, but uh, you know, when you can throw the A-Rig, the tournament results have been uh, stellar. You know, there was, a, there was one on Tuesday this week, uh, you know, before that front came through. So great time to be out on the water always before those fronts. And uh, the, the guys caught them pretty good. I think the winning team had, again, 22 pounds, which is a really heavy stringer. So if you get out there, guys, you know, the, the weather can be nasty some days, but, you know, the, the fishing's good and uh, you can catch some really big fish. You know, big fish this time of year in a lot of these tournaments is, you know, upper sixes, seven pounds uh, a lot of times. So uh, that's a great fish here in Missouri. And, and now is the time to get out of the water and catch those fish. You're, you're a lot more likely to, to catch those big quality fish now that they're fat and healthy and feeding up for the winter. So uh, let's get into the bite a little bit. Um, you know, most of the time going out there, we're throwing uh, the jerk bait and the jig. You know, a lot of these tournaments this time of year, I've, I've been fishing a few of them. We fished one last week uh, that was extremely tough. You know, we, we didn't do well at all. Uh, we, we caught some, some little keepers, uh, lost a couple nice fish, but overall didn't get the bites. They wouldn't react to the jerk bait. And those fish were down on the bottom, um, you know? So uh, days that they're down on the bottom, uh, this jig is, is really a producer. So if you can just force yourself to slow down and, you know, just stay steady with that jig, fish some of those 45 degree banks, some of those channel banks, you know, even fish around the boat dock still. A lot of times in the sunny days, those fish are gonna suck up underneath the boat docks. So don't be afraid, afraid to fish around some of those boat docks, both shallow and deep. Uh, ones that have brush are always better, I, I believe, uh, especially this time of year. They kind of want to hunker down in something a lot of days. And a lot of days when they're on the bottom and sinking, you know, down low, it's, it's good to have a piece of cover around where you can kind of uh, target those fish because they tend, they tend to get really hunkered down in that cover and, and really neutral. And that's where that jig uh, kind of out catches the jerk bait. You know, um, some days they just don't want to chase it. And you can, and you can tell, you know, we got the, the live uh, Garmin live scope, absolutely love the live scope. And uh, you know, you can tell some days they're just not chasing. So uh, on those days, the jig's really good. Uh, I'll go through my jig setup a little bit. This is three eighths ounce Trophy Bass Company Pro Jig. You know, I've trimmed the skirt down just a little bit. You can, you can even take a layer of that skirt off and make it a finesse jig. I, uh, I often do that, or finesse skirt, I should say. I, I do that a lot this time of year. Uh, but I usually do the three eighths or half ounce, uh, anywhere from 14 to 17 pound line. Uh, I've got this on a 7.3 heavy uh, six gill uh, prototype rod. This is a new rod from six gill. Uh, eight to one gear ratio rod. You need a really sensitive rod, um, <clears throat> or real, I should say. Um, but you, anyways, you need a sensitive rod to be able to, de to, to, to detect some of these bites. Uh, they're very subtle this time of year. The fish are very quick to spit that jig out. So having fluorocarbon line and a very sensitive rod really helps. And having that eight to one uh, gear ratio or higher speed gear ratio, I should say, 
Um, really helps take up the slack in that line. And you know, when those fish kind of catch you off guard or are quick to drop that jig, it's nice to have um, you know, a, a reel that's fast that you can take up some line and uh, get a hook set into those fish before they drop the bait. So they've been real finicky on that jig, but uh, it's been, been a, um, a really, really uh, good bait day in and day out, just go out and catch fish. The crankbait bite, uh, throwing the crankhead from Tackle HD, that's on the Hemdall jerkbait rod uh, from Six Gill. That's one of my favorite um, rods for both cranking. Uh, these, these smaller six to 12 foot crankbaits, you know, DTs, uh, series crankbaits, wiggle warts, these crankheads, uh, some of these smaller springtime crankbaits, that seven foot medium heavy is my favorite. And then I use like a six, six medium, uh, six foot medium, six foot six medium action on my uh, jerk bait and love that, man. That's, that's my favorite rod that I've ever used for a jerk bait. It's very forgiving. It's got a fast action, but also it's kind of moderate. So it helps keep them pegged. But on the crankbait, um, you know, I'm getting this down there and just crawling it along the bottom. Again, points, secondaries, anywhere the wind's blowing, channel swing banks, 45 degree banks inside creeks where they're kind of staging up. Um, but yeah, chase the wind around, look for active fish. Got this on 12 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, that's pretty much what I use on, on all of my crankbaits. You can go a little bit lighter. Uh, you can even go a little bit heavier if you want to, but 12 pound seems to be a great all around size, 12 or 10. Uh, using 10 on my jerk bait, uh, alternating jerk baits a lot, uh, depending on you know the mood of the fish, uh, depending on the day. If they're not reacting to one color, it seems like you can make a switch and uh, catch them on another one. So uh, you know, cloudy days, I like the the white. You know, something bone and color white it really stands out on a cloudy, windy day. They seem to really uh, be able to see that bait from a long distance and come and get it. You know, uh, sunnier days, I like something with a little bit of flash to it or maybe a, a translucent color, like a pro blue. Um, so, you know, I'm always switching the colors based on the mood of the fish. Again, the Hemdall series rod, six foot six medium uh, action, seven to one gear ratio reel. Um, still wanna be able to take some slack up, you know, if those fish catch me off guard and start running at me. Um, but in between jerks of that jerk bait or just to make another cast. So that's seven to one gear ratio reel, 10 pound Bass Pro Shops fluorocarbon, six foot six rod, you know, you can't go wrong there. Uh, that six foot six rod and a shorter handle kind of allows you to present that bait a little easier. But fishing that around windy points, um, over the top of, you know, rocks, brush, uh, around the sides of boat docks, um, anywhere I'm seeing fish, oftentimes I'm using the live scope to kind of see some bait, uh, see fish, um, and, and sometimes they're just relating to open water. Uh, but, but on days that they're really biting, they're going to be up closer to the bank and you just throw that jerk bait up towards the bank and, uh, you know, really been using a pretty quick retrieve on that for the most part. Um, some days you got to let it sit there, you know, just let the, let the fish kind of tell you what to do. Uh, and then the A-Rig, of course, the A-Rig, uh, day in and day out, is probably your best bait out here. Um, you know, I haven't been throwing it a lot lately. Uh, been we did throw it on some of my guide trips recently and had, had a good bit of success on it. They've been biting it. So uh, the Tackle HD Swimmers, uh, 3.5 inch swimmer, the Alewife color, and what is this one? Iridescent blue uh, have been really good to me. I like this bait because it's durable. And I also like it because it's a, uh, you know, a little bit different profile. It's going to get uh, some of those bites that, you know, I mean, these fish see a lot of the same, um, you know, Kitex style baits or, you know, I throw this Bass Pro Shops uh, Speed Shad a lot, which is an awesome little bait. I, I throw this over the Kitex, you know, about 100% of the time because... I'm sponsored by Bass Pro Shops. <laughs> so, but that's a great little bait, you know, and that style, that Kitex style bait um, really works well. But, you know, that's what everybody's throwing on there. So I like to switch it up a lot of times, give them a little bit different look. And what I really like about these baits is I can keep my A-Rigs on the shelf uh, in between throwing them and it doesn't rust out 
uh, the jig heads on the A-Rig because it doesn't have a lot of salt to it. But uh, that's the Alewife color. That's probably my number one color. And then uh, the other one is this iridescent blue. It looks, it's kind of like pearl with a blue tint to it. It's, it's a nice little color, but usually uh, 3.5 inch. Um, you know, sometimes I'll throw a four inch in the middle. Uh, grab this one, here's a good example. This is one I grabbed off the wall here. Um, so it's got two dummies here uh, and I've just got a screw lock on those. And so you got two dummies. Uh, those don't have any hooks on it. And I put those on top. And then a lot of times I'll put a bigger bait in the middle and then two on the bottom that are, uh, you know, sometimes bigger, sometimes the, the same size as the dummies, but uh, the three hooks are, are always in the middle and, and bottom. You know, I feel like it, the bait runs a little bit better that way and you get a few more bites. But, um, you know, some, depending on the day, depending on how the fish are relating to cover, you know, I'm just covering a lot of water uh, looking for active fish with that Alabama rig and just trying to pinpoint where they're located at, whether they're close to the bottom, whether they're up on the surface, whether they're relating to points or brush piles or uh, drains or what it, whatever it may be. So, um, you know, I'll just keep on the move with that. That's one of the, the good parts about it. You don't have to be super slow with it. Uh, you know, although the retrieve is pretty slow, you know, I'm throwing it out there sometimes sinking it out to the bottom and then just slow, steady wind, uh, back in. Sometimes I'll, you know, jerk it around or move it around cover or up above cover, you know, um, depending on what I see on the live scope. But, you know, for the most part, slow, steady retrieve, and, uh, that's going to get you a lot of bites. Uh, crappie fishing has been outstanding. Been doing a lot of that when, we, when we've been out there. A uh, couple different ways to catch them. So I uh, got a little six gill rod and reel set up here. This is a six foot uh, ultralight rod here. It's the uh, Aether and awesome uh, for shooting docks and just all around fishing for crappie. I've got six pound Bass Pro Shops line on here. I, I really like the high vis line. It helps you detect some of those bites because the, the crappies are biting uh, very light right now on a lot of days, especially when they're neutral. They're just like the bass. Some days they're active, some days they're not. On the days that they're not active, you really got to slow down and, and coax some bites. Or what I like to do is just move around a lot. Let's say you got uh, 20 boat docks you like to catch fish off of. I'll go to the boat dock, try to catch three or four of the active ones and just move along to the next one. So three ways to catch them. Number one, for me, I love fishing around boat docks, so we try to do that a lot, especially when I'm out there by myself. Um, I shoot, shoot this jig up underneath the boat docks. Uh, this is the um, Tackle HD Baby Shad on just a 16th ounce jig head. That's usually what I'm using. Sometimes I'll use an eighth, but I'm just looking for boat docks that have a lot of shade, uh, have some wind blowing on them, makes them even better and uh, situated around uh, points or bluffs, um, you know, whether the, they're in a creek or outside of a creek, I'm just looking for a big dock that's gonna hold a lot of crappie. Uh, brush is even better, but shade is real important and some wind on it's important too. That, that really gets those crappie active, but I'm using my uh, side view from Garmin to idle around and, and find those fish and locate them and then I'll turn around and, and fish for them. Uh, there's always some crappies around the brush piles. You can target them with this same jig. Uh, you can do a slip bobber. Uh, you can fish the jerk bait. Love, love throwing the jerk bait on those fish. Um, but there's a, a lot of fish in brush. And then there's also a group of crappies that are just swimming around in open water, uh, chasing shad, uh, drifting around with the wind. I'm not quite sure what they're doing, but they're swimming around in huge schools out there. For those, uh, slip bobber works really good. Just throwing this jig out in front of them works well. Um, and you kind of, you, the live scope is, is the way to do it. I mean, you can idle around and find these fish on your side view or down view or even traditional 2D sonar. You, I mean, there's so many of them, but to, to really pinpoint the crappie, the Garmin live scope is, uh, you know, the, the tool to have. It really is. It, it makes it easier and it makes it to where you can follow these fish around and make pinpoint accurate casts to them. Um, and, and, and that's the other way to catch them. Uh, jerk bait is, is phenomenal on the days that are, they're really biting, 
but uh, crappie bite has been good. It, it's we've got a bunch of crappie in the lake right now, so um, now's the time to go out out and fill your freezer. I've been saying that a lot lately, uh, but it's true. You know, I mean, get out there. There's a bunch of them in the lake. The lake's really healthy, and uh, both the bass and crappie are biting. So uh, good luck to everyone out there. Hope these uh, reports are helping you guys on the water.